Shakir is the most successful Latin American singer on the world pop scene. A songwriter, a philanthropist, and just a wonderful person, today we'll tell you how Shakira reached the heights of fame and became a favorite of the public, thanks to her talent and hard work. Shakira, how the Colombian pop diva lives and how she spends her millions. Shakira Isabel Mabarak Rapol was born on February 2, 1977, in the Colombian city of Barranquilla into a wealthy family. The future pop diva's father, William, is Lebanese, and her mother, Nidia, has Spanish and Italian roots. The future star is the only child in the family, but she has eight half-brothers and sisters from her father's previous marriages. Shakira grew up a gifted child. At one and a half years old, she knew the alphabet. At three, she could read and write. And at four, she was completely ready for school. The parents were proud of their daughter's achievements, so they decided to have her abilities tested by specialists, who after a series of studies, concluded that the girl was a child prodigy. Looking ahead, it is worth noting that Shakira's IQ is currently 140, which is an indicator of genius and a record among the stars of world pop music. In addition, she speaks six languages. The father owned a jewelry store, and in his spare time, he wrote various stories. He passed down his talent to Shakira, and at four, she wrote her first poem. And at seven, she asked her parents to buy her a typewriter. Many of the girl's works form the basis of the now famous tracks. She was also fond of painting, so her parents predicted that their daughter would either become a great writer or an artist, but they were wrong. One day, four-year-old Shakira found herself with her father in an ethnic restaurant, where a dancer performed a belly dance to oriental motifs. The girl was so impressed by what she saw that she climbed onto the table and started repeating the moves, which caused a round of applause among the guests. Having received incredible pleasure from public attention, she decided she would become a performer. Shakira studied at a Catholic school, and as early as elementary school, took part in creative activities, at the same time, the girl enrolled in the school choir, although she didn't attend it for long, since the choir conductor once said that her singing was like the bleeding of a goat. Fortunately, Shakira didn't give up and began to practice singing and dancing with even greater enthusiasm. At eight, the girl wrote the first song, Tus Gafes Ascoris, Your Dark Glasses, and dedicated to her father, who wore dark glasses for years to hide his grief over his eldest son's death. It is worth noting that William is a wonderful father who spares neither time nor money for raising his children. However, for Shakira to learn to appreciate what she had, the man once took her to a local park to show how orphans live there. What she saw remained in her memory forever, and she decided that when she became famous, she would help those in need. She kept her word, but more on that later. At 10, Shakira won her first talent show, after which she started getting invites to various events in her hometown, where she earned initial public recognition. At one of the competitions, theater producer Monica Ariza spotted her and decided to promote the young talent. Monica organized auditions for the girl, and one of them was a success. The Colombian division of Sony Music signed a contract with 13-year-old Shakira. The singer's debut album, titled Magia, was released in 1991 and consisted of nine songs written by Shakira. Even though the album was not commercially successful, the singer gained popularity at home. At that time, the young girl fell in love for the first time. Her partner was a neighborhood boy, Oscar Prado, but after several years, the feelings gradually died down. In February 1993, Shakira represented Colombia at a music festival in Chile, where she took third place. Interestingly, one of the judges was 20-year-old Ricky Martin, who gave his vote to the girl. In March of the same year, the singer's second album, Peligro, was released, which turned out to be a commercial failure, just like the previous one. At that time, Shakira was disappointed in herself and decided to take a break from her music career to finish school. Since then, her first albums have been discontinued and are now considered not official, but rather promotional. After graduating from school, Shakira moved with her mother to the Colombian capital, Bogota. In 1994, she got the lead role in the series El Oasis, a Colombian reinterpretation of Romeo and Juliet, and even performed the title song of the telenovela. By the way, 
This was not Shakira's first appearance on the screen. She had previously had cameo roles in various TV series. At the same time, Sony planned to terminate the contract with the singer, but she presented the song Donde Estas Corazón, which instantly became a hit. Ay, buscando, ¿quién sabe qué cosas tan lejos de and after that, Sony decided to give Shakira another chance and finance her third album, Pies Descalzos which was released in 1995 in Latin America and a year later in the USA. The album skyrocketed to the top of the charts and sold more than 5 million copies. It included 11 songs, among which was the single Estoy Aquí. In 1996, the singer went on an international tour and became the first Colombian to conquer the world. In the same year, Shakira received awards in the categories Album of the Year, Video of the Year, and the Best New Artist at the Billboard Latin Music Awards. In 1997, it became known that the singer was dating actor Asvaldo Rios. The lovers hid their relationship and practically didn't appear together in public. Even though the couple was called the most beautiful in Latin America, their relationship lasted only eight months. Interestingly, at that time, Shakira was offered the role of Elena in The Mask of Zorro, which she refused, thinking she didn't speak English well enough. As a result, the role went to actress Catherine Zeta-Jones. In 1998, the singer's fourth album, Donde Están Los Landrines, was released, the title which translates to Where Are the Thieves? Shakira came up with it after an incident at an airport when unknown people stole most of her belongings, including new song lyrics, which forced her to start working on the album from scratch. The album reached number 131 on the Billboard 200 chart and held first place in the U.S. Latin Albums chart for 11 weeks. Among the 11 compositions, the song Ciega, Sardamuda, was the most popular, especially among girls who started imitating Shakira's style by braiding their hair just like her. Since then, it has sold over 7 million copies worldwide and 1.5 million in the U.S. alone, making the record one of the best-selling albums in Spanish in the States. In 1999, Shakira was nominated for a Grammy for the first time in the category Best Latin Rock or Alternative Album and also the MTV Video Music Award in the category Favorite International Artist for the song Ojo Sasi, which she won. With the same song, the pop diva performed at the Latin American Grammy ceremony where she was nominated in five categories, two of which she won. At that time, not only her music career was gaining momentum, but also her personal life. In 2000, Shakira began dating lawyer Antonio de la Rua, the son of the then president of Argentina. He became not only the singer's lover, but also her business manager. In 2001, Shakira released a live album recorded during her performance on MTV Unplugged, which sold five million copies, the commercial success was also solidified by the Grammy Award in the category Best Latin Pop Album. After reaching such heights, the singer decided to conquer the international arena. In the same year, she released her fifth studio and first English language album, Laundry Service, which included 13 songs, among which Objection and Whenever Wherever were particularly popular. The latter reached sixth place on the Hot 100 in the USA and not only made Shakira famous all over the world, but also became her signature song. Many fans were unhappy that their favorite singer had chosen American pop music over her authentic folk motifs. Nevertheless, the album received many awards and with more than 20 million copies sold, has become the most successful in her career and remains so to this day. At the end of 2002, the singer went on an international tour for six months, during which she gave more than 60 concerts in different parts of the world and managed to earn about $72 million. At the end of the tour, a live album, Live and Off the Record, was released, which reached number one on the Top Music Videos chart in 2004. In 2005, Shakira released her sixth album, Fiacion Oral, Volume 1, in Spanish. 
The album reached platinum status 11 times and won 15 awards, including the next Grammy. It has also become commercially successful. For example, in Mexico, the entire stock was sold out on the first day. Among the 12 tracks of the album, the most successful track was the passionate duet with Spanish singer Alejandra Sanz, La Tortura. In the same year, the singer's seventh album, Oral Fixation, Volume 2, came out, a continuation of the previous one, which included songs only in English. The album failed to achieve great success in the U.S., but the single Hips Don't Lie, featuring Wyclef Jean, was a smash hit, becoming the best-selling single in the last 10 years. Oh, baby, when you talk like that, you make a woman go mad. In 2006, Shakira went on to a concert tour that lasted more than a year and became the longest and most expensive in her career. The singer gave 116 concerts in 37 countries around the world. In 2007, the artist recorded a duet with Beyonce, Beautiful Liar, which set a Billboard Hot 100 chart record. The single skyrocketed from 94th to 3rd place, which at that time was the biggest climb in the chart's history. At the beginning of 2008, Shakira ended up in fourth place in Forbes' ranking of the highest paid performers. A few months later, she signed a 10-year contract for $300 million with Live Nation, the largest concert organizer. The following year, Shakira starred in the TV series Ugly Betty, where she played herself. She also released her eighth studio album, She-Wolf, in which the single with the same name reached the top of the Latin American charts and achieved worldwide success. At the same time, it became known that the singer's personal life wasn't as smooth. And after 11 years of being in a relationship with Antonio, they broke up by mutual consent. During this whole time, the couple wasn't officially married. In many interviews, the girl has repeatedly stated that a piece of paper is not important to her. However, according to some reports, Shakira wasn't satisfied with the marriage contract, which her lover's father demanded her to sign. The concerns were not unfounded, because a few years after the breakup, Antonio sued the singer with a demand to pay $100 million compensation for his contribution to her music career. Fortunately, the court rejected the claim of the pop diva's ex-boyfriend. In 2010, Shakira launched her perfume line with three fragrances, S by Shakira, Dance, and Love Rock. And in the same year, the Colombian was honored to record the official song for the FIFA World Cup in South Africa. The groovy track, Waka Waka, was successful and reached the top 20 in the world charts. This is Africa. On the set of the video, the girl met the Barcelona defender, Gerard Piquet, who fell in love with her. They were able to see each other for the second time only during a festive dinner in honor of the winning team. Piquet admitted that he won the championship not only for the title, but also for the sake of seeing the pop diva again. That's when the relationship started, but it became public only a year later. Interestingly, the lovers were born on the same day, only Shakira is 10 years older than her partner. In the fall of 2010, the singer presented her ninth studio album, Salé El Sol, after which she went on an international tour. The song Loca was received the best by the fans. And I'm crazy, but you like it. Loca, loca, loca. In 2012, Shakira took part in the American show The Voice, replacing Christina Aguilera in the mentor's chair. With her appearance, the ratings of the show significantly increased, and the pop diva earned $12 million for her participation. Meanwhile, the artist's relationship with PK reached a new level. In 2012, Shakira moved in with her lover in Barcelona, and a year later gave birth to their son Milan. Family life made changes to the singer's music career. Due to the birth of a child, the release of her 10th album, Shakira, on which she began working in 2011, was postponed to 2014. One of the album's songs was reworked for the FIFA World Cup, and the track, La La La, performed together with Carlina Brown, became the second anthem of the World Cup. In 2014, 
In 2015, Shakira gave birth to her second son, Sasha, and the following year, she voiced the gazelle in the cartoon Zootopia. Initially, her character looked a little different, but at Shakira's request, the gazelle's hips were enlarged. In 2017, the singer's 11th album, El Dorado, was released, the main hit of which was the track Chantaje, featuring Colombian singer Maluma. Puro, puro chantaje, puro, puro chantaje. The record brought Shakira the third Grammy Award, which made her the only Latin American artist to achieve such results. In 2018, the singer went on a world tour, and in 2020, together with Jennifer Lopez, she performed at halftime of the Super Bowl, to which 103 million people tuned in. Today, the singer continues to make music and is working on another album. Recently, she presented the single Don't You Worry with Black Eyed Peas and David Guetta. Gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. It also became known that in June of this year, the pop diva broke up with her spouse and they're now fighting for custody of the children. According to some reports, the reason was the numerous infidelities of the soccer player. Soon, Shakira plans to return to the USA. As of today, the pop diva's fortune is estimated at $300 million, which she earned through music, TV projects, and advertising contracts. Shakira appeared in advertisements for brands such as Pepsi, Activia, Pandora, Oral-B, Nokia, Sony Ericsson, Angry Birds Game, and many others. And last year, she sold the publishing rights to 145 of her songs to a British investment company. According to some reports, the transaction amount exceeds $100 million. The singer owns expensive real estate in different parts of the world. In 2012, together with PK, she bought a house in Barcelona for $5.8 million, where the star couple lived with their children. Orange trees grow on the terrace, and the house has several bedrooms, a living room, and a library. Before meeting the soccer player, Shakira lived in Miami. The singer bought the Snow White Villa back in 2001. A building with an area of about 8,600 square feet has a spacious kitchen and living room, six bedrooms, and a room for rewards. Outside, there is a terrace with a bar and a huge swimming pool. A few years ago, the singer put their property up for sale for $11 million. In addition, Shakira owns a house in Colombia, a villa in Cyprus, as well as the island of Bonds Cay in the Bahamas. The latter was bought together with her friends in 2005 for $16 million. A resort area was supposed to be built on the site, but the business plan, the cost of which is approximately $485 million, has not yet been implemented. The Pop Diva also owns a collection of cars, including Audi A7 Sportback, Mercedes-Benz SLK 250, Tesla Model S, BMW X6, Audi Q7, and Mercedes-Benz SL550 for $115,000. It is known that Shakira also owns a private jet. The singer spends a significant share of her fortune on charity. Back in the late 1990s, she founded a charity foundation where she sends 50% of her payouts to help orphans and poor families. One time, Shakira starred in a champagne commercial and all of the $660,000 earned, she gave to the construction of two schools in Colombia and Haiti. She is also a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, and last year, together with Prince William, released the documentary, The Earthshot Prize, Repairing Our Planet. In 2011, Shakira received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and in 2013, she appeared in the ranking of the most influential women in the world. Barbie dolls were produced in her image, and a metal statue was erected in her native Colombia in honor of the pop diva. All of this suggests that Shakira managed not only to achieve commercial success in her music career, but also earn the love of millions. Do you like the Colombian singer? Aquaman, how Jason Momoa lives and how much he earns. Jason Momoa, full name Joseph Jason Namakia Momoa, was born in Honolulu in sunny Hawaii on August 1st, 1979. He is the only child of artist Joseph and photographer Connie. 
The actor's father is a native Hawaiian, while his mother has Indian, German, and Irish roots. Jason's parents divorced when he was a baby. The boy stayed with his mother and moved to Iowa. From an early age, he showed off his athletic abilities and spent his free time outdoors. Growing up, he was interested in mountaineering and axe throwing. After high school, Jason enrolled in a local college where he studied marine biology. As a student, he traveled the world, studying painting in Paris and Buddhism in Tibet. But in his last year, he dropped out of school, deciding to return to the Hawaiian Islands. He was attracted to the ocean and beach life, and he also wanted to establish a connection with his father. Momoa graduated from one of Honolulu's prestigious colleges. In addition, the future actor studied wild animals at the University of Colorado. Soon he was noticed by the famous Japanese designer Takeo Kokuchi, who invited him to come with him as a model. Jason participated in numerous photo shoots, as well as in local beauty contests, and he also worked as a salesman at a surfer store. In 1999, having won the title Model of the Year on the Islands, he began his acting career. The newcomer's debut was his role as Jason Owain in the 10th and 11th seasons of the popular TV series Baywatch. It is of note that the creators of the project preferred Momoa out of the 1,300 candidates, despite the fact that he had no idea how to behave on the set. His character appeared in 40 episodes, and after the series ended, in the full-length spin-off Baywatch Hawaiian Wedding. By the way, during the filming of Baywatch, Jason met actress Simone McKinnon and started an affair. According to some information, it was she who insisted that the Hawaiian attend an acting school, which he graduated from, not really hoping for success. However, Momoa, already by 2004, appeared in the series North Shore, filled with seascapes and semi-naked models. In the same year, he played a small role in the comedy Johnson Family Vacation. The film was released on the big screen and received a lot of flattering reviews from critics and the attention of the audiences. But the real success came to the young actor a year later, when he appeared in the role of Ronan Dex in the TV series Stargate Atlantis. Hi. I heard you died and came back to life. Pretty much. There's a, there's a few things I still need to do. A recognizable feature of the hero's image was his thick dreadlocks, which Momoa decided to cut off for the final fifth season because his neck ached due to the heavy hairstyle. In order not to disappoint fans, a wig was made. Thanks to his participation in the project, he received offers for roles that later helped him become world famous. Meanwhile, Jason and Simone announced their engagement, but their wedding did not take place. In 2006, the couple broke up. While still in the relationship, Momoa met with the ex-wife of musician Lenny Kravitz, actress Lisa Bonet. The actor was 12 years younger than his lover. He first saw her when the series The Cosby Show was released, where Bonet played the main role. Jason was only eight, but he immediately fell in love with the show and promised himself to meet her at all costs, which happened in 2005. Their first meeting took place in one of the jazz clubs in New York. Jason and Lisa spent the whole night talking at the bar. They looked as though they had known each other all their lives. At the time of their meeting, Jason was 26 and his beloved was 38. In addition, the actress had a daughter, but the couple decided to take their time with the wedding. By the way, the lovers look very cute together. Jason with a manly, frightening and attractive appearance and a height of almost six foot four and a refined petite Lisa whose height is only five foot two. The lovers perfectly complement each other. In 2007, their daughter Lola Iolani was born, which in Hawaiian means royal hawk. A year later, a son was born who was given a very unusual name, Nikoa Wolf Manakaopa Namakia and this name has meaning. The boy was born at night during a terrible thunderstorm. Nakoa means fighter, mana means willpower, kawa means rain, and po means dark. In addition, the actor is the stepfather of Lisa's daughter from her first marriage, actress and singer Zoe Kravitz, with whom they have a very warm relationship, and their pair tattoos confirm this. But not only the births of his children become important events in Momoa's life, in November 2008, during an argument in a cafe, an unknown person hit him with a broken beer mug. Jason received about 140 stitches. The traces of them became part of the famous image as an actor who almost lost his left eye. The attacker was sentenced to five years in prison. In 2010, Momoa together with his friends founded the production company Pride of Gypsies, 
And after performing a ritual dance of the New Zealand Maori tribe at the auditions, Jason convinced the producers and got into the cast of a new project from HBO, which was promised to turn out into a well-known series. And it turned out to be true. The series Game of Thrones was a real breakthrough. Jason got the role of the most noticeable character, the leader of the formidable Dothraki clan, Khal Drogo. The barbarian's wife, Princess and Khaleesi Daenerys Targaryen, was played by Amelia Clark. Anna, you Drogo, attack Jin. Anna, Vidri, Unlike her partner, Momoa only appeared in the first season. For the sake of this role, he had to gain weight, which he did with a diet of pizza and Irish Guinness beers. After its release, the project got a cult following, and Jason Momoa in 2011 received the well-deserved award at the CinemaCon Festival in the category Rising Star. It turns out that the actor tried to stop Lisa from watching the series not only because of the love scenes with him, but he did not want her to become another fan of Game of Thrones. In the same year, a remake of the film about the legendary Conan the Barbarian was released, where the actor played the main character. Do you have a name? My name is Tamara Amalia Jorvi Karushan. And yours is? Conan. Conan. That's it? How many names do I need? Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office and received negative reviews, the role of Conan pushed his name to the top league of young actors in modern Hollywood. His task was not to imitate Arnold Schwarzenegger, in order to achieve the perfect appearance, in Jason's opinion, he trained a lot and dieted. Meanwhile, the harmony and idyllic life of the actor was almost undermined by journalists and envious people. During the premiere of the film Conan the Barbarian, he was kissed by the star of the series Charmed, Rose McGowan. The picture spread all over the internet and gave rise to rumors about the impending divorce of Momoa and Bonet. And one after another, articles appeared in the press pitying the unhappy wife who turns a blind eye to her husband's systematic infidelities. But despite the rumors, the couple stayed together. Despite the success of Game of Thrones and a good income, after the end of filming, Jason was out of work for several years. He accumulated unpaid bills and his debts multiplied, and his family, as the actor himself admitted, even had to star for a while. In 2012, Momoa appeared as a murderer in the film Bullet to the Head. The main role in the film was played by the legendary Sylvester Stallone. I said I was gonna kill you. Yeah. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Just you and me, two professionals. Only one gets away. The actor managed to replenish his family's budget and partially deal with debts in 2014. After the release of the film Road to Paloma, he not only played one of the main roles, but also wrote the script for the film and acted as a director and producer. One of the main roles was played by Lisa Bonet. Meanwhile, the star had several more roles, and while they did not bring him large amounts of money, they kept the family from sliding into financial issues again. The next movie is the action movie Wolves, where the actor played a werewolf, and the fantastic horror movie Debug. In this film, Momoa played an employee of the space station struck by a virtual virus. In 2016, Jason played a cannibal who fell in love with his victim in the post-apocalyptic drama The Bad Batch. The film received a special jury prize at the Venice Film Festival. In October of the same year, the world premiere of the comedy thriller Once Upon a Time in Venice took place, in which the actor also played a key role. Hey, look who it is. What's up, Charles? Where's my shit? Yeah, where's your shit? A real success for Momoa turned out to be a collaboration with the DC Comics film universe, thanks to which the actor tried on the image of the superhero Aquaman, who commands water and marine life with a magic trident. For the first time in this role, he appeared before the audience in the movie Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. In August 2016, the Guinness Brewing Company began to produce a new product named after Momoa, Mano Brew, which the actor happily announced on Instagram. At the same time, he starred in the title role of the historical television series Frontier, about the rivalry of the British Hudson's Bay Company with French and American fur traders at the end of the 18th century and also appeared on the screen as Aquaman again. So in November 2017, fans of DC Comics were able to see the collaboration between famous superheroes, Justice League. You got no powers, no offense. This guy might be working for the enemy, we don't know. 
You're tripping over your feet and mine. Oof. You're gorgeous. Participation in the film earned Momoa $4 million, but the project became a box office failure and received mixed reviews from critics and viewers, which forced the company to reconsider plans for future projects. Meanwhile, Jason and Lisa have reconsidered their relationship and sealed their marriage bonds. The ceremony was held in Topanga, California. The chamber wedding was attended only by close people. Among them were Bonet's daughter from her first marriage, Zoe, actress Elisa Vikander, and Michael Fassbender. Curiously, Zoe and Michael once had an affair, but they remained just friends. The newlyweds informed the world about the important event only a few months later, noting that the wedding was just another reason for them to get together with family and friends, and they felt like husband and wife for a long time. In her interviews, Lisa calls her husband a generous leader, which according to her, gives him a rare form of masculinity. It is known that the actor thoroughly prepares for each role. He studied various martial arts techniques before appearing as Conan the Barbarian and Aquaman. And after the wedding, he started practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. In 2018, the actor appeared in all his glory in the main role in the film Aquaman, based on the comic book series of the same name by writer and screenwriter Jeff Jones. Hey buddy, you that fish boy from the TV? Oh, great. In addition to Momoa, Matt Damon and Simon Baker auditioned for the role of Aquaman. At the premiere, Jason, along with his children and crew members, performed his favorite ritual dance, which had previously brought him success with Game of Thrones. Impressive graphics simulating the underwater world, large-scale battles, and of course, Momoa's acting, menacingly waving his trident, made the film a cinematic event of the season. The film also included stars like Dolph Lundgren, William Dafoe, Nicole Kidman, Patrick Wilson, and Amber Heard embodied the image of Aquaman's beloved. And although most of the filming did not take place underwater, the conditions couldn't be called simple. They were suspended in the air, and a huge fan blew into their faces. The project turned out to be so successful that it surpassed the 1.14 billion mark at the box office, becoming the most profitable in the DC universe, while the actor himself received an impressive payout of $14 million. Also in 2018, Jason Momoa was awarded the title of the most beautiful man according to the T.C. Candler Internet Portal. Another successful step in the actor's filmography was his work in the Canadian action movie Braven. Momoa's character is a lumberjack who has to engage in an unequal battle with a clan of drug dealers. In the same year, he had the honor to announce the winner at the Academy Award ceremony in the nomination Best Supporting Female Role. Jason went on the stage with Helen Mirren, the actor appeared in a pink suit made of delicate velour, and he had a matching hairband on his arm. Thanks to this image, he was named the most stylish man of the event. In 2019, Momoa joined the cast of the sci-fi series for the Apple TV Plus video service C. The plot tells about people who have lost their sight, whose life changes when twins appear in the tribe who can see. Jason plays a tribal leader living on an isolated mountaintop. How can he? This is our home. We are one, and we fight as one. Prepare for battle. The actor approached his role with great responsibility, working closely with the project coordinator, who is blind from birth, who is responsible for the correct representation of blind people on the screen. In order to experience the life of a man who sees nothing, the actor lived in a sleep mask for several weeks. He was paid $600,000 for the first episode alone. Jason has a good sense of humor. He even wanted to become a comedian on Saturday Night Live, which he admitted in the opening monologue to the show. The actor was prevented from becoming a comedian by his busy career, although he still played in several sketches. For example, Momoa as an elf who reports to Santa about the bad behavior of a 13-year-old boy. Before each role requiring impressive musculature, Momoa goes on a diet with a lot of protein, reducing carbohydrate intake. The only thing the actor can't do without is his favorite beer. However, in the summer of 2019, after seeing a picture of Jason on the beach, many were upset by how his figure differs from the screen image. But a lot of fans noted that they liked Momoa 
who gained weight without extra abs even more. In 2019, Jason took the part in the promotion of the new album Ordinary Man by Ozzy Osbourne, appearing in the teaser of the song Scary Little Green Men, and voiced Aquaman in the animation project The Lego Movie 2. Fans who were surprised by the actor's published video, where he shaves off his famous beard, also know him as an environmentalist. In this way, Jason decided to draw attention to the problem of plastic and remind people of the importance of proper disposal of garbage. During the same period, the actor joined the Hawaiian protesters who opposed the installation of a 100-foot telescope on Mount Mauna Kea, which they consider sacred. Scientists wanted to install a $1.4 billion device to use it to study distant galaxies. At the same time, the Australian editorial board of GQ magazine awarded Jason Momoa the title of Person of the Year, which was a real surprise for the Hollywood actor. In social media, the artist said he hoped that the award went to him, not only for his film roles, but also for his environmental activism. In February 2020, Momoa appeared in one of the most notable advertisements at the Super Bowl. In the project by Rocket Mortgage, which promotes mortgage services, the actor appeared in a rather unusual way, losing a solid part of his hair and muscles. Also in the video, Jason's wife appears, who helps her skinny husband put a barbell on the rack. By the way, in the video about how the ad was shot, which can be found on Jason's Instagram, it is clear that Lisa can't hold back her laughter, looking at her balding husband. Momo is an avid fan of all kinds of heavy music, in an interview, he admitted that some heavy metal songs inspire him to create his characters. One of the actor's favorite groups is Arch Spire, whose members, at his invitation, played cameo roles in the TV series C. And Momoa himself, with vocalist Ali Peters, practiced the correct screaming technique for an important scene there. <laughs> In addition, Jason can play guitar, ukulele, and drums. On his last birthday, the star was presented with a custom bass guitar Fender Precision. The actor's children also show interest in musical instruments. In 2021, another story about superheroes from the DC Comics universe was added to Momoa's filmography, Zack Snyder's Justice League. In the film, the characters played by Momoa, Ben Affleck, Ray Fisher, Henry Cavill, confront the invasion by Steppenwolf and his army of parademons. Don't count on a Batman. Why not? Because I don't like you coming here, digging into my business, getting into my life. People from Atlanta tell me to do this, now you say do that. I want to be left alone. The actor also appeared in the role of gunsmith Duncan Idaho in the next film adaptation of the novel Dune by Frank Herbert. Me hey, you. Put on some muscle? I did? A little earlier, the premiere of the movie Sweet Girl took place on Netflix, where Jason played the main role. According to critics, the picture is full of cliches, and the plot itself is quite generic. In 2023, the premiere of the film Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is scheduled, and the actor will also take part in the thriller Fast X. When he's not at work, Momoa likes to draw. He doesn't use email and doesn't like talking on the phone. Nevertheless, Jason gets along with technology. Despite the fact that his life is connected with the film industry, Momoa does not like to watch films and prefers reading. He is especially fascinated by Japanese poetry and the work of Charles Baudelaire. The actor also devotes a lot of time to training, which he has a personal instructor for. Momoa has several tattoos on his body that have a special meaning for him. On the actor's chest, there is a tattoo with the names of his children, which are written in their handwriting. The name of a deceased friend is imprinted on his finger. The traditional Hawaiian triangles on the hand are also of considerable value for the celebrity. They are made in the form of shark's teeth and are a talisman for Jason, who is a Buddhist and often visits Tibet, where he receives spiritual knowledge. In his free time, he goes hiking, kayaking, and motorcycle riding. He also enjoys archery, throwing knives and axes, roller skating, snowboarding, and cycling. Unfortunately, in January 2022, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet announced their divorce. Now the actor's fortune totals $10 million. Before the divorce, he lived in a huge estate in the suburbs of Los Angeles worth $3.5 million. The area of land in which the estate is located is five acres and belongs to Jason's wife. She bought it back in 1995 and arranged it to her taste 
pets also live there, two half-wolves and a donkey named Freya. Jason is fond of collecting guitars, motorcycles, and cars. He has a Harley Davidson Softail Slim, a BMW R9T Scrambler, a glamorous 1957 Harley Davidson FLH, and an old custom bike. In addition to motorcycles, the actor has a Range Rover and a Land Rover Defender, a charming pink 1955 Cadillac nicknamed Bernadette, a Ford F-150, and a whole park full of Earth Roamer bikes. If you follow the life of Jason Momoa, you probably have noticed that he is really fond of the color baby pink. Momoa explains this by saying that pink lowers testosterone and soothes him. He has many different things of this color, which the star often wears not only in public, but also in everyday life. We must say that he's maniacally entrepreneurial. It seems that the actor starts a business literally once every two weeks. At the moment, Momo is engaged in something with biodegradable beach shoes and sunglasses, nylon surf pants, pink boots and climbing bags, hiking backpacks, handmade knives, leather bags made of old things, belts, and reusable water bottles. What do you think is the reason behind Jason Momoa's success? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.